Hi, Harry. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, well, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, oh, welcome to Making the Cut. Um, and of course, we are here in the awesome Mini Electric. Are you ready to go for a really cool ride? It's a cool car. Yeah, Absolutely. I know. Thank you. Well, it's not mine, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm looking forward to bringing you on a little ride. And uh, let's go and see what this car is made of. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I know you are a huge uh, advocate of uh, sustainable urban city solutions. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that means, give us an example and also how are you driving this as the CEO of uh, Property Guru? Sure. So I think more and more people are choosing to live in cities and cities are the most efficient way to get to things whether it be healthcare or education, yeah. or jobs, uh, etc. And therefore the question becomes, are we building cities for tomorrow or mm. are we just replicating the cities of yesterday? Right. Particularly in this part of the world, in Asia, where we are still growing and developing our cities. Yes. Should we just replicate cities from hundreds of years ago uh, or should we look at building the future? And I think when you think about urban living, it's I, I sort of look at it at three levels. There's mm. within the house, right? there's within your community or neighborhood or estate or whatever. And then there is at the city or country level, the right. three layers to it. And I think uh, the way we have started, uh, you know, at Property Guru, we run surveys regularly. And our, uh, in Singapore, for instance, our most recent survey, which was at the end of the first half of 2021, uh, essentially we found 81% or sorry, 82% of Singaporeans were willing to actually pay more to live in a sustainably built home. Oh, is that so? That's right. Fantastic. And so they're beginning to value it. They're understanding oh. if we don't make these choices, uh, the world's going to get worse, more flooding, more plastic waste, more unbuildable yes. air. So I think there's not much of a choice, frankly. And it's good that kind of you're also being driven by that consumer demand as totally. well in that sense, right? Yeah, no, I, th I think we really see ourselves as working in partnership with the community. So mm. we see ourselves as industry leaders for property technology. So we feel we need to lead the way in some ways. But that is a partnership with the community. So right. with consumers, with property developers, agents, etc. And I think uh, when it comes to urban living, uh, mm. for sure, I think the consumer interest is going to drive the future because the developers will build homes the consumers want to buy. Uh, intermediaries like us will help educate consumers so they yeah. can make intelligent choices. Uh, so I think that's, that's an important starting point. So we are now sitting in an electric car. Mm -hmm. I hope you're enjoying the ride so far actually because I am. <laughs> very smooth, very smooth. Well, thank you. I'm going to try not to like jog the car too much. Oh, that's very you know, and now when we talk about electric cars, electric mm -hmm. vehicles in that sense, I mean, especially even if you talk about it in Singapore, like by 2040, we're intending to not have any, you know, uh, 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 petrol or combustible engines in Singapore. Right. But in fact, I think newly registered cars from 2030, right? Mm -hmm. But you look at electric cars and you think, and, and maybe here's a question for you, what sure. do you think the impact of electric cars will have on mm -hmm. a sustainable city in the future? I think it's very interesting because I think um, you know there are multiple levels to it. There's the car mm -hmm. itself, there is the electricity that's generated right. to actually power the car eventually. And I think when we think about electric cars as uh, you know urban city, city dealers, we need to think about it holistically, all mm -hmm. the way from when you know the minerals were raised to actually generate the battery for the car. It's like wheel to uh, uh, well to wheel, that's right? Correct. The entire process. That's correct. So I think um, I mean the obvious change is obviously going to be more breathable air. Mm -hmm. now in Singapore, we're blessed. We have you know very good uh, checks on carbon emissions, etc. Yeah. But you just have to step out of our city to any other city in the world and you will find tremendous emissions coming from auto auto automobiles. So I think removing that is an immediate win. Yeah. But I think then we need to be much more deliberate about thinking about you know battery technology. How is that mm -hmm. evolving? Are we sure that you know we are not going to create uh, more bio waste in the you know ecological waste in the future? Yeah. These are questions we need to ask ourselves. And then the final part is where is the electricity actually being generated? Are we using, uh, is it again carbon fuels or is it some other form of renewable energy, whether it be solar or geothermal or hydro, etc. Now, so we are sitting, you know, in this uh, amazing car. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, it's 100%, uh, this mini electric is 100% electric. It's right. also packed with tech, as mm -hmm. you can see. How else do you think we can harness technology for mm -hmm. a more sustainable future? See, I think technology, we were talking about it earlier, but I think that technology, first and foremost, is a mentality. The tech uh -huh. mentality is pervasive. Now, our children, whether they become technologists or not, 
are going to have this mentality from their youth and the, the mentality is around problem solving. You look at a problem, you look at the cause and the effect and you start thinking about what are the causes that I can put in there that will have a positive effect. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if you think about technology, any technology of whatever kind has always focused on efficiency. How do you make things more efficient? So I think the technologies that exist um, which are powerful are the ones that sort of fade into the background but make our lives easier, make them more efficient. Right. Then they, you don't even realize it's there. That's right. I think technology when it's powerful is not evident. It is just mm -hmm. everything just works. Singapore, you know, speaking of which, is uh, obviously we're accelerating our efforts in terms of uh, uh, you know sustainability. I mean, you can see it with our green plan, and also towns like Dunga are coming out. Yep. I mean, we're talking about central cooling, you know, saving uh, a lot of energy. What would you like to see mm. um, happen as well as we start gearing up towards uh, you know as a more sustainable future? I think first and foremost is this ownership from every citizen. Mm. Every citizen must think about this uh, city and this planet as uh, theirs and they have a role to play in it. So we can't sort of just say, okay, the government needs to take care of us or private enterprise. Every individual, every household can make a difference. Mm. And I think uh, you're already beginning to see that. Like to your point, you know, whether the HDB Green Towns program, yep. you're seeing more and more Singaporeans saying we would love to actually live in those. And I think that's wonderful that, uh, that the government's thinking that way. I think uh, more recently this year, we saw 81% of Singaporeans say save our forests, save the, yes, the greenery. That's right. So I think, you know, that shows a couple of things. One, it shows that actually we're building a responsible citizenry, uh, that they understand that, you know, they play a role in it. And if they say something, you know, the legislators and the, the, the people who are running the government will be forced to take action accordingly. And the second is just understanding that by making changes in behavior within your own household, you could start impacting some of these changes as well. So it's not just choosing where you're going to live, but then how are you going to live once you get into that home? Right. So Ari, tell me, you know, what are some of the challenges that we face in mm -hmm. urban living? So I think in urban living, uh, as I mentioned, you know, there are three levels to it. There's within the household, within the community, and then at the city or country level. Right. And I think first and foremost, we need to start within the home. Within yes. your home, are you making those changes? Are you thinking about sorting your garbage? Are you thinking about single-use plastics? Are you even recycling, right? Or Correct. starting to recycle? Correct. And I think that if you look at every action you take, whether it's ordering food mm. or whether it's, to your point, when you're disposing things, how are you thinking about it? Um, you need to make these small changes in behavior starting at home before you can then impact the community and then eventually, obviously, the city. Right. Yeah, and that's really important to think about, right? Because, I mean, it's not just saying that you want to achieve sustainability, but how are you going about as an individual, as a household, doing it? Correct. I think this, this whole civic mentality needs to be there. I think uh, yeah. in every city, you know, we need to start again within the communities, thinking about within your estates or within your condos or whatever. Are you having this conversation? Yeah. I think that's a great place to start. Are you discussing it? I mean, what are we going to do about it? Right? Should we put solar panels on the building? Should we... Uh, recycle, you know, rainwater harvesting. Should we look mm. at that? How, have we created enough, to your point, recycling bins where it's convenient? Yes. Because I think, you know, people underestimate the impact of convenience. We live in a in an age of convenience. We're used to everything being convenient. And if you, if you make it convenient, people will change their behavior pretty quickly. Because we've heard of 3D printing homes, mm -hmm. um, I well, it's not really widely adopted at this point, but you see a lot of companies studying it, people getting a lot of funding for it. Do you think 3D printed homes are going to be a sustainable uh, uh, solution for mm -hmm. urban living in the future? I think so. I think, you know, already there are experiments going on in yeah. townships that are getting 3D printed and, you know, you have an efficiency of use of materials, which is one other way in which you help the environment. You know, it's very efficiently done. It's like almost zero waste, That's right? exactly right. Yeah. A lot of waste, you know, if you look at it, 8% of carbon emissions come from the use of cement in construction. Mm. So if you are more efficient in that, then, you know, you're already helping the planet. I think beyond that, when you look at, you know, uh, cities like Singapore, where you have, you know, uh, you know, large towers, Modular buildings are also becoming a reality. Yes. And the tallest, I don't know if you know this, but the tallest modular building in the world is in Singapore. Yes, it's coming up soon, That's right? That's right. Yeah. And, and you know, the amazing thing with modular buildings is that you don't have to build it on premise. You can build it off location ah, somewhere else. Yeah. So there isn't 
this general construction site chaos that comes, you know, whether it's the air quality dropping, yeah. sound quality, etc. And I think it is, you know, you're able to do it in a more efficient way in a, in a location built for just manufacturing these things yeah. and then just assemble on site like Lego blocks. Yeah. And I think that's fantastic. Okay, so, you know, you, I mean, like we talked about, you the engineering background, you know, and also you work in a company that is uh, really leveraging uh, innovation and technology. So how else do you think can we leverage um, innovation and technology, you know, to, to kind of propel us mm -hmm. into a more sustainable future? So I think, you know, the way we've approached it at Property Guru, we've definitely looked at it as, you know, we need to help people make actionable insights or to mm -hmm. get relevant content. And so one example of that is, Recently, we launched in Singapore a product called Property Guru Green Scope. Okay. And the idea here is if we create more awareness and education around how sustainable is your HDB or your condo yeah. to start with, I mean, those are the, kind, the two kinds of projects that have green scores today. What we've done is we've gone and mapped every single condo or HDB estate and given it a green score. Oh, fantastic. And, you know, this is based on empirical data. It's not our opinion. It's based on uh, whether they've got a BCA green mark rating whether they've won a sustainability award from uh, the Property Group Asia Property Awards, which you know the largest property awards in the, in the region, and also proximity to public transportation. Okay. So, I mean, these are just three parameters today, but I think we're clear that we'll really keep evolving these parameters. And, you know, we soft launched it earlier in the year, in, uh, and, and in roughly six months, we've seen two million Singaporeans already interact with this product, even, oh, though, we, even though we hadn't made a big noise about it. And this begins to tell you that people are looking for it. If they see something like this, they're curious. They want to understand, okay, this house that I might buy or I might live in, if all things being equal, I'm hopeful that people will choose a more sustainably built home. And I think that's the starting point. First, have the conversation, build more awareness and transparency. Yeah. Then you can start making decisions. Yeah, and they're willing to put their money on it. Right? Absolutely. They're willing to pay more, as I mentioned, yeah. for a sustainable, sustainably built home. But first and foremost, they need help in finding those homes. Yes, that's right. If I look at two buildings, how do I know which one's better than the other? And I think that's where a number of players, including ourselves, can play a role in education. Well, you know what, Hari, thank you so much for your insight, for your perspective on sustainability. I mean, it's been really uh, wonderful for me to be able to share uh, this valuable information from you. So thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this awesome ride in the Mini Electric. No, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being here. Nice to be with you. And I love this car. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I love it too. Shall we just kind of uh, go a little bit faster? Yeah, Still within so. the, the speed limit. Of course, huh? of course. Yes, always of course. Yes, always safety always, first. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Harry. Thank you. <laughs>